Hey guys, I'm Brian with Teradek and I'm here to go over the Control 5 OS. Control 5 has four pages that are most important. We have the home page here, and if we hit menu, we have the devices, settings, and lens mapping. Let's dive into our settings. In the settings page, you can configure your controller so that it matches your preferences. We can change the depth of field meter color. We can show the meter scaling on their focus, as well as when we scroll up, we can change meter scaling for iris as well as zoom. Continuing to the user buttons page, we can configure the device so that each of our user buttons, A, B, C, or D, can be set to certain settings that are pre-selected in the, these menu structures. As we head to the input page, we can reconfigure the knob, slider, the zoom wheel, as well as the zoom rocker into different axes and inputs, depending on how you need to configure your controller for the shots that you're creating. We have the option to recalibrate our knob as well as recalibrate our slider. So the reason to perform a knob recalibration is if your readout is not matching the position of your knob. So here we have a 20 inch lens ring. If we go to lens, lens ring, and we select the 20 inch so that it has a reference of the lens ring to the knob. From here, it's asking me to set my minimum. I'm set to my minimum. Now it's asking me to rotate the knob to infinity, 22 inches, two foot one. Calibration has been completed and now we have the full throw on our new recalibrated knob. Continuing on with our settings, we have the option to flip our axes. This allows you to change the motor direction so that it aligns better with the knob uh, direction that you're anticipating. Moving on to lens, this is where we can select our lens ring type. There's also a user button that we can assign this to. It gives us the option to control our minimum mark behavior, as well as extend past the lens limits itself or choose the uh, units. So if I want to switch these to metric, I have the option to do that. The lens map behavior allows you to stick within the limits that you've already selected or extend beyond the limits. This is helpful for when your lens has quite a bit of travel beyond infinity or under minimum. Under camera, we have the option to select the camera that you are working with. You have differences between R RED RCP, older DSMC2 RED EPIC, or if you're using a RED and using straight up the three pin RS, we have those options too. For the distance, this allows us to set our offset for focus distance measures like uh, the TOF, Cine RT, Moon Smart, Cine Tape as well as make adjustments to the autofocus speed. So if you want a slow reaction versus a fast reaction, we can control those options here. Under the LEDs, this allows us to change the brightness of the LEDs on the controller itself. So if I wanted to select red, for example, that changes the LED color here. Under system, whenever you're setting up your controller uh, for the first time and you're connecting to a MDR. This is the setting in which I would select my radio channel. So if this is connected to the MDR, you will see a connection established basically. And then I can control the power in which the radio is being able to identify the MDR. So if I'm working right up against an MDR, I would set the, the power level of my RF to low. That way the controller can actually talk to the uh, MDR when it's up close. If we're going to distance, like working with drones, and I need extended amounts of distance, then I would use settings like US Max or EU Max. So to give perspective of the RF power levels, if you were talking to a person next to you, you would wanna whisper to the person next to you rather than yelling. This is the difference between setting it in low and high power versus a person staying on the other side of the room. You may wanna yell to them so that they can hear you effectively. That would be the instance of using the US Max. Moving on, we have the Wi-Fi settings. So we can turn off the Wi-Fi settings. We can create an access point in which a device can connect to the controller's Wi-Fi, or we can set a, a client mode where we can connect the hand unit itself to Wi-Fi. Under display, we can control the brightness of the uh, LCD itself. And then we can set timers for when the screen may dim or sleep to display itself. Under reset, we have the option to factory reset the controller, or if for some reason there are issues going on with the controller, we can hit the reboot on the controller itself or just power cycle the hand unit. And the last setting option we have is to check the firmware. Moving on from settings, 
let's move into the devices page. Under the devices page, we can see the MDR that's connected and what motors are connected to that MDR. We can check the serial number as well as the status of the zoom, iris, and focus motor. So from here, if I were to select the Motor S Max, I can identify that it's selected as the zoom motor, and I can check my torque levels, my response, or I can hit calibrate, and it'll auto calibrate the motor on the lens itself. Options for changing your torque can be related to the stiffness of a lens, whereas we're putting more power into the motor so it can turn the lens where there's more resistance in it, and also the responsiveness of the zoom to how fast or slow we want the controller to be able to translate to the lens motor itself. After we select the settings that we want the motor to be set to, we hit done, and then we can either move on to the next motor, or in this instance, we'll head back to home. The next page we'll dive into are the lens maps. If we hit menu and select lens map, you have the option to create a new lens map. From here, we can select the manufacturer, but for our purposes here, we'll select other and type in a random lens type. From here, we can start creating our lens map. We'll get the question on, is this a prime lens or a zoom lens? If we hit no, the controller understands that it is a zoom lens. We'll start mapping the focal length itself. And if I hit back, I can say finish table. Now it's asking me to do the iris. Let's set it to wide open. Select my first iris point. And now I can move on to focus mapping. I have the option to select between imperial and metric. For these instances, I'll select imperial. Now we'll go to the minimum of the lens. Our last point will be infinity. And now that we've mapped the entire lens, we hit use this lens map. You'll see the check mark appeared on the side of the zoom there. So we can keep it enabled or we can hit disable to disable the lens map if we want to move to a different lens and mark that lens. But for this, we use map. And then we, when we go to home, we'll see the lens map that we just created and shown on the home screen itself. So in this instance, we've mapped one lens. But if you're doing a long form show, commercial, you name it, you'll be able to have access to all the lens maps that you've already programmed in your prep directly on the lens mapping menu. Moving on from the lens mapping, let's jump into an overview of the main screen. We can see the focus scale where I can zoom in using a pinch to zoom function, as well as pushing buttons here to zoom in to preset distances. From here, you can see there's a depth of field, the little blue mark here. This will change as I change by iris, and it will also change with the zoom. So the wider I go, the more depth of field to be shown. There are two screens to show between the zoom as well as the iris option. So when I change my iris, you can see it emulated here, but if I select the zoom option there, I can see a zoom scale. This is important when I want to do a, a limit on a zoom scale itself, so I can stay within that limit, or if I want to do markers on the zoom scale, so I can do controlled marks. And if I press and hold, I have the option to delete all markers. If we were to set focus markers, you can select the button here, and then we can select various colors we can push and hold and grab a marker and move it on the device itself. This is very useful for when actors aren't hitting their marks or where you have to change marks on the fly versus creating a whole nother mark. And then if I push and hold, I have the option to remove all markers. When using RT overlays, the marks added to this screen will be mirrored directly on the small HD itself. We also have the option to lock screen inputs as well. So if I select which inputs I want locked, I can go into there and it is now locked. If I push the button again, it unlocks. And in this instance, you can see that I've locked my focus dial. And pushing unlocks it again. In addition, we can set focal limits. So if I press and hold, I can set a focus limit to where the focus dial will only register the movement between these two set limits. Pushing this button again clears that. And this rounds out our Control OS overview. For further updates and other questions you may have about Control 5, head to teradeck.com.